Hi, I'm Kyle Lyon, pre-sales engineer here at Solutions PT, and today, myself and my colleague Alicia are going to go over the highlight new features in Plant Scada 2020. For those unfamiliar with Plant Scada, it's the new branding for what was formerly known as SciTech, and it's been renamed to reflect its new role as an integrated part of the overall Aviva operations control portfolio. It's the same great product under the hood with the same development team, but it's now going to expand with many more new capabilities well into the future such as the ones that we're going to go over today. With that said, I'll hand over to Alicia for our first topic, the integration of the industrial graphics platform into Plant Scada. So now we are going to be going over Aviva Industrial Graphics, which is our new graphics platform that we want to evolve our graphics library to. You can access the industrial graphics by going onto the Plant Scada Studio, Visualization tab, Pages, Set pages to industrial graphics, which is on the top left, create a new page, and you can open this and embed the graphics. You may have come across this interface in our other suite of Aviva products. Our goal is to have a common graphics platform, making it easier for engineers to learn one system and apply it to all of our products. A major benefit of industrial graphics is that we can embed pre-existing graphics and you can have access to our situational awareness library. This provides a range of graphics that are developed using the simple wizard, helping enhance operator awareness of current process conditions using a range of visual techniques. The biggest difference between the old graphics builder and this one is that previously we could host multiple graphics, whereas now there is only one editor per graphic, which really makes it easier for you to save and embed the graphic multiple times throughout your project. With the graphic, we can add custom properties and use the new tag autocomplete feature rather than going into Tag Viewer and manually searching for it. The editor also supports some highly requested features such as vector zoom, where you can zoom in and out as much as you want. And all of these graphics are web ready and we can open it in the HTML5 browser. It's also supported on web first and it's always recommended to compile first before you re it in your web browser. I'm now going to be handing it back to Kyle, who will go over the rest of the features. Thanks Alicia. Next up, we'll go over some of the security enhancements that have been made in this release. The main theme with these improvements is resource protection, especially in the face of the ever-growing cybersecurity landscape. The first change is virtual service accounts. Now, we're following the Microsoft recommended approach of having different services running under different unique VSAs, which each have capabilities limited to their function, meaning that one account doesn't have all the available privileges and functionality that plant guarded services require, and these are instead distributed across multiple different accounts. This means that in the event that one is compromised, the malicious actor doesn't have access to the totality of the available features. Next up, we've got folder restrictions. So where these used to be hard-coded local Windows groups, for example, uploaders, deploy, etc., they can now have domain groups mapped onto them by an administrator in the Aviva configurator files, registry keys, named pipes, ADF secrets, program data, and many more folders now all have access control lists applied. Deployment now leverages TLS 1.2, with support for that being brought in in this version. And there's been a host of updates to the kernel, far too many to go over in this video, so please do check out the latest version documentation for the changes listed there. And finally, a much requested feature is Windows authentication support for CT API access has now been added. So you'll need to provide Windows authentication credentials in order to access the CT API functionality. The final feature for this video is the introduction of the OPC UA server client functionality. Like the industrial graphics platform Alicia went over, this also leverages common technology from a Viva system platform and InTouch as part of bringing in support for OPC UA as a standard across the Aviva portfolio. The server can be configured within the configurator, which is located in the Windows Start menu under the Aviva folder upon installing or upgrading. Once configured, you can expose out an OPC UA data access server for your plant scarred attacks. Note that in this release, this support is limited to tags only so OPC UA 
alarms, conditions, and historical access support are planned to be included in future releases. You can also enable encryption in here with basic 256 SHA 256 or enable anonymous access for testing purposes. Here, I've got a third party OPC inspector just to show what this looks like. You can see that we've got clusters at the top of the hierarchy with our equipment and the flat tags located underneath them. And those flat tags will be located underneath the clusters at the hierarchy root as well. By default, OPC UA attributes are under each tag. These extensions are exposed as attributes, but these can be turned off via SciTech any parameter if CPU and memory is a concern. Hopefully this has given you a brief look into the main new features included in this release. From the introduction of the industrial graphics platform as a supplement to the existing plant Scada graphics, to the range of security hardening measures that we've implemented, and the introduction of the OPC UA server client functionality. Naturally, there's even more improvements included that we don't quite have time to go over today. So if you're interested, please do feel free to get in touch with us on our website or by phone.